Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? Good. How was your weekend? Killer. Commander, what do you, I don't even know. I'm like so out of, I don't know. I wanted to make some cool comment to you, like captain or control or whatever the hell, the pilot guy. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, we were like just blowing away. It was the, the coolest thing ever. I bet. So, yeah. well, hello everybody out there. Hello. Everybody, give me a wave, a peace sign, a hello. <laughs> a happy How's Monday. Going? Yeah. Happy Man, Monday. we've got lots of people getting on the call. Hello. Hello. I see Amy. I see Roxanne. I see Beth. I see Candy. I see Angela. I see Jean, Maggie, Janet, Renee, Darlene. The list goes on and on. You got another, you got another 140. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm off. Let me see here. Hey, Terry. Hey, is that, how's everybody tonight? Who was that? That was me, Jay. Oh, Jay. <laughs> hey, Jay. <laughs> All right, pal. Let me see if I can find you here, Jay. There you are, bro. Hang on one second. It's moving so fast, I'm in trouble keeping up with the feed here, Jay. Just give me one sec. It says Vox Life on it, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, be down at the bottom here. Do, 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 do. There you are. <clears throat> Gonna wait a few more minutes, Jay, just for a few more people to race on here. Beautiful day out there. I hope everybody had a great day today. Lots of people out there sharing the technology and events and so on. A few more minutes here. You can hear me okay, Jay? I can hear you great, Terry. Hey, Terry, am I going to be able to share my screen now? Have you passed the baton over yet? One second, Jay. People are logging on so fast that I'm just having trouble keeping up with the feed and finding you here. So give me one sec. We're going to get rolling here. and. 30 seconds. Thank you everybody for taking the time to be on the call tonight. We've got an exciting, <clears throat> exciting night. Thank you, Jay, for taking the time to finish part two of your training that started last week, which I'm sure everybody has had a chance to either review yeah. on the replay. I'm gonna mute everybody for one second and I'm gonna unmute Jay. Okay, Jay, you should be able to hear me now. I can hear you great, Terry. Perfect, okay. I'm just gonna find you here, then I'm gonna pass on the, the controls to you. I passed on the controls to Paul in the simulator and we crashed. Let's not do that. Hey? <laughs> not his fault though. I had good training. I had a professional pilot that trained me for three or four or five minutes before Paul jumped in. He just jumped in and started grabbing the controls and did amazingly well, believe it or not, for, uh, for not having uh, any experience. So, and not having the, certainly the training I had. But anyways, Jay, you are now the host, my friend. You can share. So I'd like to welcome everybody to our call tonight with our CEO and founder, Mr. Jay Dollywall, who's going to talk to us tonight about talking about money and feeling good about it. So welcome, Jay, and take it away. Thanks, Terry. It's so great to be back. It was a lot of fun last week. I think we got some amazing feedback uh, from the entire team. So I'm going to get right into it, guys. Um, tonight's topic is talking about money and, and being comfortable with it, right? Um, 
So we're gonna we're gonna start right away from the beginning. So there's a lot to cover, right? So we're gonna get into this. We're gonna grow into this uh, presentation. And a lot of it's the first two or three slides are gonna be review for what for what we're talking about. For some of you that have been to the the corporate trainings and the presentations, the first two or three sc screens and slides are gonna look very familiar. But it doesn't hurt for review because it all ties together. <clears throat> so why grow our team, right? I mean, we talk about. How important it is that, that we work together and, and lead from the front and, and get everybody on the same wavelength uh, with what we're trying to do and and where does the mission you know completely align with our personal requirements and our personal needs and our financial wise we're going to get into that today and how we talk about that so it's all about the mission right this is why we grow our team it's about the why it's about the how and it's about the what and guys before you can have a conversation about the financial success that's up that's available for yourself and for others you need to be absolutely comfortable and absolutely expert on having this conversation about how our business and our company is organized and what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it because if you don't have these slides and if you don't if you can't have this conversation then there's going to be holes uh, in the story you tell about Vox life and our mission and how we're executing it and that's going to leave a lot of doubt in people's minds that we're actually going to be able to do what we say we're going to do, okay? So the Vox Life, why? You know, it's to help a billion people with a higher quality of life. Why? Billions deserve our help. Healthcare is broken. These are facts. Healthcare is expensive. Healthcare is inaccessible. Designed for infectious diseases. The paradigm shifts to chronic conditions. Guys, this is the reality we live in, right? But there's more. People are living longer, not better. 1.5 billion people in pain. 2.5 billion seniors deserve our concern. 30% of North Americans live alone. 30%, one out of three, it's a big number. 32, 322 million people depressed or anxiety or some kind of addiction. It's a global sleep crisis. These people are our families, they're our friends, they're our neighbors. This is us, this is the world we live in. These are our communities, these are our homes, these are our neighborhoods. And this is why, our, this, is, this is our big why. We know that there's a tremendous, tremendous uh, number of people that deserve our help, billions of people deserve our help, and we've structured our business around the why. And the why is the most important for us as, as a company because it allows us to stay focused on True North and execute and build the right programs and build the right channels and build the right plans to execute on that, right? But right underneath that is our how. And you guys need to know this, okay? This is what we talk about, the four pillars of Vox Life. You need to, you need to, you need to know this because this is what separates us from any other business opportunity in direct sales and network marketing. No other companies aligned this way, the way that we've built it, and it's purposely built this way. So you have to be, you have to be, you have to understand this, and you have to know this. Okay. So the first pillar is we have the what the world needs and the world deserves. Okay. It's it's our Voxy technology. We've got that dialed in. We love what we do. We love the whole notion of helping people's quality of life. It's critical. And when those two things come together, we have a mission. Okay. And that's and that's our big why out there. It's important that these two things exist. Third thing is we get good at what we do. We're committed to excellence. We're committed to self-improvement. We're committed to self-improvement as, as a company. And the field is going to demonstrate that they're committed to improvement as well by continuously learning how to do what they're doing better. Right? And when you have that, now you're going to add passion to it because people love to get great at what they love to do. Right? So people that love to golf practice a lot of golf. People that have other passions practice those things because they so enjoy doing them and they want to get better at it. Few people will dedicate time to things they don't love to do, right? Just the way that we're built. But the fourth pillar, we're going to spend a lot of time on this. The fourth pillar is you got to get paid for what we're doing, okay? All those three things by themselves are going to be incomplete, right? Because when you're good at it and, and, and you're going to get good at it, you get paid for it, it's a profession. And when you get paid for something that the world needs, that's a vacation. And we sit right in the middle of that, guys, okay? But you have to understand this concept. These are the four pillars of Vox Life. Because if you don't understand this, then you're going to miss what separates us from every other business opportunity in the world. Okay, It's absolutely critical you understand this. Because you have to commit to self-improvement and understand what I'm saying today. And you need to be able to regurgitate it. You need to be able to say it with passion and conviction. Okay, How we do Vox, business, uh, Vox Life is aligned with our why. So we're trying to change a billion people's lives for the better. And we've organized in a way the people involved in it are also going to benefit. Okay, and the what we do is Vox HPT. You guys all know the selling points of Vox HPT. 
This was a proprietary technology, drug-free, non-invasive, non-electrical, immediate approaching instant, easy to use, 24-hour access, non-reactionary, aid-safe, pregnancy-safe, portable. Our what is aligned with our how and our why. Now, this is all recap. These are things you all need to know. Okay, because if you don't know these first three slides of why we're doing it and how we're doing it and what we're doing, there's a big gap, okay? And, and you need to reach out to your leadership team and the people that brought you on board and say, listen, you know our why, our how, and our, 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 and our what? Because if they don't know it, you need to review this training and you need to get it down and you need to know it, okay? And all this stuff is available in the back office. So this is what it means. So the alignment of our why, our how, and our what makes us authentic, okay? It's based on trust. That's what you get. When, you, when you're authentic, people trust you. And trust leads to loyalty. And then you'll inspire others as a true leader and you become unstoppable on your mission. Whatever your mission is, right? And we're going to talk about personal whys and how we get there today, okay? There's a personal why for all of us. For 99.99% .99 of us, our personal whys are very much at this point attached to financial success. Because that's the reality of it, right? That's the world we live in today. Okay, so let's talk about money. So we got to get really comfortable talking about this. Okay, because if we can't talk about this, how can we inspire other people to join our mission? And say, hey, listen, hey, I've, we got this crazy mission with this company, but just come along for the ride and it's, you know, and just dedicate your time, energy, resources without any payback. And that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's talk about that. The mission is only reachable with a profitable financial model. Okay, you have to understand this. And you have to share this to people, right? But it has to be profitable for both the company and the field. Both of these facts need to exist simultaneously. If it's just profitable for the company, not profitable for the field, it's not going to work. If it's only profitable for the field and not profitable for the company, it's not going to last. So it doesn't make sense. So we need both, okay? And we have to be comfortable talking about this by why the business is organized and the way we're organized. And right now, this is focused on the fourth pillar, the compensation for doing all those other three pillars, okay? So financial reward success provide the company and the field resources to reach their collective and individual why. And we're going to talk about that individual why, right? Because that's so important for everybody. We all need to really understand why we're doing it personally. And sometimes we get stuck in saying, hey, listen, I've got a need for ABC, and the company wants to have a billion people. How do I align it? We're going to share with you today how you align that. So, and the key is, when that happens, you can escape from survival mode, you can attain status, you can build freedom, and you can start living a life purpose. All of this comes from abundance, okay? None of these things are going to come from scarcity. None of these things are going to come by avoiding the conversation of money, okay? That's the reality. That's the world we live in, and we got to hit it on the head. we got to work it through. we got to understand that if, if we're going to align our why with the company's why, it's financial reward, and it's healthy to talk about it, right? Because the reality is this. Philanthropy and charity comes from financial abundance. It doesn't come from financial scarcity, okay? We have to understand this, and we have to be comfortable saying, hey, my why is financial so I can get out of survival mode, so I can attain some status and help build something for my family and live in freedom and life of purpose. That's going to come from building a platform of financial success. And you've got to share that with the people you're talking to, okay? We're talking about how to do that. So aligning financial success with the mission. So the mission is help a billion people, right? Today we're at three million help. So there's a there's a way to go, okay? There, there's a way to go on this. There's a lot of way to go, but we're on our way. So, but to help reach a billion people, the requirements for the mission are this. There's gonna be a massive requirement, investment in new products and inventory. There's gonna be a massive financial investment in field development. There's going to be a, require a massive investment in company infrastructure. There's going to be a massive financial investment in marketing. There's going to be a massive financial investment in international expansion. And this will not happen without financial resource success. We're not going to get to a billion people. So, yeah, you're all in on me with this, and we're all going. But until we have financial resources success, it's, we're not going to get there. Right? We're not going to get there. Hey, what's up? Right? So that's the key. So how does this align with where we are as individuals, right? We might be in survival mode right now. Okay. We've got to get to a life of purpose. All on my tablet. Hey, Terry, somebody, can you get somebody there to just mute them there for a second, bro?
He's on one second. For what? You're the host today, so you got to mute everybody. You know, both sucks, right? Yeah. Hey, people, if you're listening on the call right now, if you're talking your phone or your computer is not on mute, could you please mute it, please? Oh, I'm going to mute him right now. There. Here we go. Okay, everybody's muted. Super. All right, here we go. So, so what does that mean? Right? So, so if we're in survival mode, so our, our personal needs and our personal whys are aligned with the company's mission. So if we're in survival mode, we're going to get the life of purpose. There's things that we can do along this chart that are going to help us get there. Right? So the first thing is get out of survival mode, and that's at like $500 a month. An extra $500 a month, statistics in North America prove that 66% of North Americans don't have $500 emergency fund. So that's survival mode. We have a program that gets you out of that immediately. In one month, you can get out of survival mode. Okay? So what's next? Next is attain some financial status. Let's let's you can build that to two thousand dollars a month. Following, follow align with the plan. Align with helping a billion people. What you're doing is you're executing on getting all those people together and doing this yourself, right? Because you, your team's not going to follow you if you won't do it. What's the next level? Attain financial freedom, and that's you know ten thousand dollars a month is a tremendous amount of freedom that we have from day to day uh, financial requirements and stress of bills and expenses. And then we're going to reach a life of purpose, right? At $20,000 a month, you can sit back and do all the things that you want to do and know that, hey, I built this amazing, purposeful business that I can achieve and reach all of the hopes and dreams that I have for myself and my family. But there's a dividing line here, okay? The dividing line is up to status is all personal performance. You can get to $2,000 a month on your own without building a team. You can do that by yourself. We have a program to do that. You can do uh, sock and soul parties. You can do trade events. You can do online commerce, all e-commerce. For you can do all those things and generate that revenue for yourself. To get past that, to get into financial freedom and to, and, and to, and to build a purposeful, grandiose life that you've always dreamed about, you're going to need to build a team around it, right? So how does this work? As Vox is building and growing toward a billion people, help. And we're investing all of this financial resources into growing the business and achieving our, our goals. You can align with that growth. You can commit to that growth. You can commit to that mission with your own personal goals and saying, hey, listen, I need to get out of survival mode. What do I got to do? I need to get to the next level of status. I'm already here. I need to keep financial freedom. As we grow closer to a billion people, you will grow closer. To a life of purpose, but you have to participate in your own success. No one's going to do it for us. Just like no other company or no other business or no investment bank is going to do the Vox life mission for us, no one's going to do the personal why for anybody, right? We have to own that and we have to do that, right? So what does that mean? So behind the, these different beliefs we have in, our, in ourselves, it's really our parents' fault. Right? They gave us all these belief systems as we're growing up about how to deal with money and how to think about money. So I just blame them. We just blame the parents. Okay, It's easy. So what, what is your money mantra? What do you think about when you think about money? So how do you, what relationship do you have with money? Is it like, oh, I don't have enough money. There's never enough money. Money's so hard to make. Or do you have other mantras? Do you believe in other things? Do you repeat other things? Because whatever you focus on is going to come closer to you. Okay. That's just a law of the universe. So every day I make more and more money. Is this what you believe? I have money which I wish to have and which I need. Is that your belief system? Am I attracting more money? I do not owe any money to others. Because sometimes people live in debt and they got to get out of that, right? So that's a survival mode issue. You got to work through that. I will find new opportunities to make money. I deserve all the abundance in life. So how we think about money, whenever the concept of money comes to us or in conversations, uh, with, with our loved ones, with our spouses, with our children, with our peers, with our friends. What's your money mantra? How do you say out there that, hey, listen, I'm attracting more money. I'm looking for opportunities that can make me more money. Is that your outlook? Or is it, oh, I don't have enough money. I never have enough money. I've never had enough money. There's not enough. If that's your mindset, you know now that you've got to change it. You've got to really evaluate these. And there's nine things here that I want you to think about and take notes on and work through it. And it's going to become very clear where your relationship with money is. 
because all these things are going to help you talk to potential prospects about money. So what do you think about money? Right? How often do you think about it? Are you living in scarcity or abundance? How much is a lot of money to you, personal? Now, this is perhaps one of the most personal questions you can ask yourself. Right? Because everybody has their own answer. And everybody's answer is right. But you have to know what this is for you. Because then you know where your why is going to be and what you're going to work toward and what it's going to take to get there. Okay? And how much money is too much money? Is, is that a concept that you believe in? Is that a concept that, that, that's ingrained in you? Is there enough money? Could you be happy? Right? It's just all about clarifying for ourselves what is our money belief system. Because unless you know what it is for you, how are you ever going to paint a picture for other people about their relationship money and how they can move forward and, and grow into abundance if we're not there yet ourselves? Okay? How much is too little money? Okay? That's another quick question. You have to ask yourself, right? Because surviving isn't living. Okay? Remember this. Surviving is not living. It's just surviving. And the potential in us, the spark of the infinite creator in us, is not just to get by. It is to live a glorious, abundant life. But if we're putting these restrictions on our own mentality, on our own thinking, then we're not going to get there, right? But you have to answer these questions for yourself. And in answering those questions for yourself, you'll be able to have those conversations with people that are going to bring into your organization and say, hey, listen, these are people I can work with. This person needs some help. You'll be able to be a better leader or provide the guidance that's required. But there's more. What are your negative ideas about money? So we've all heard this. Is money the root of all evil? Right? We've all heard that, right? Or is the lack of money the root of negativity? Right? What is it? We've all heard this in our lives. And it's all wrong. Okay? It's all wrong. Right? Do you spend most of your time trying to save money? The world has changed, guys. We cannot save the prosperity anymore. Must focus on earning, right? The cost of living, the cost of goods and services, inflationary processes out there, technology. We can't save the prosperity like we could at a different time and age. If we're not focused on earning and finding opportunities to earn money, we're not going to get there. We're not going to save our way to prosperity. It doesn't work. How much time do you spend connecting with new money? Are you looking for people with healthy relationships with money? Okay. I know everybody on the call. We've got a couple hundred people on the call today. I know we've all come across people in our lives, in our business, in our families that are always negative about money, that are always scarce of money, always short of money, never had enough money. Those are going to be the hardest people to work with as you try to grow your business. Why? Because they're not aligned with your, with, with your belief system on money. Right? And you have to know that getting into it. But first, you have to understand where your own belief system is and what corrective measures you're going to take toward it. So how do you act when you see something? This is a perfect test of your own belief system of money. How do you act when you see the price of something in a store or at a restaurant? Do you say, that's fine. I want it anyways. There's always more money. I can always earn it. No problem. More money is going to come in. Or it's like, I would never spend that. These are all test questions that you have to ask yourself so you get a picture of yourself of, hey, this is how I deal with money. This is what my thoughts of money are. Because without it, we're not going to be able to have those conversations with our team. And you got to have those conversations with your team. Okay? So, your parents likely gave you your beliefs about money. Now you know. You have to decide if those are the beliefs you want to live with. It's completely, completely up to each and every one of us on this call how we go forward, how we treat it, how we look at it, and what we think about it, okay? Yeah, we can blame the parents, but now you know. Now you can decide. Are you going to climb that, climb that success ladder and reach your why and reach your dreams, or are you going to let all these old belief systems hold you back, okay? So if your friends won't talk about money, you got to get new friends, okay? And I'm just telling you. Okay, because this is why. I'm telling you why. The wealthiest, most successful people talk about money and opportunity all day, every day. All day, every day. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. It's good enough for you. 
You got to change your bandwidth. You got to change your frequency on this. If your friends won't talk about money, get new friends, right? Because their belief system is holding you back because you're buying into it. So these, these people are philanthropists, humanitarians, the leaders in business, technology, finance, and healthcare. I got a lot of friends that are worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. The financial people, the technology people. You go to lunch with them, all I talk about, next business opportunity, how the stocks are doing, how much money they made, how much money they lost. They focus on that. Okay? Why? Because they've figured it out. That saving is not going to get them. they got to figure out multiple income streams. they got to figure out ways to make money. And are they generous? Absolutely. Are they humanitarians? Absolutely. Do they give to charity? Absolutely. Are they decent people? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderfully generous people. You think about it. All the philanthropy that happens in the world and the hospitals that get built and the schools that get built and the hungry that get fed and the poor that get clothed, it's coming from people with abundance. It's not coming from people without. It's not coming from the scarcity pool. It's coming from we got lots and we're going to give out. So the most, the biggest philanthropists in the world are Bill and Melinda Gates. Okay, and Bill and Melinda Gates started the Gates Foundation when he was a multi multi billionaire, right? But to this day, he's still managing a very massive portfolio and still focused on getting those things done, right? So if we're going to look for like listen, success leaves clues. So we got to listen and follow the most successful out there. And what are they doing? They're focused on income streams. They're focused on money because they know that with those things, they're going to be able to provide and help not just themselves, but society and the communities they live in. And that's very important. So if your friends won't talk about it, you're not going to get them to. So just get new friends. And yeah, you got to do it. So when people say it's not about the money, I always laugh when I hear that. It's not about the money. But likely belief system here is there's something wrong with it about being about the money. There's something wrong with wanting more income. This is a belief system that many, many people have. Saying this creates an internal conflict because part of us wants to grow and the other part says, oh, you're wrong to focus on money. Usually people who say it's not about the money are making very little money or they're undercharging for their services and products. Okay? So this is what happens. Believe in the mission. We want to be the mission. And then because we want to, we say it's not about the money, we discount the product. or We give away the product for free when we know perfectly well the person can afford it. Right? All we're doing is sabotaging ourselves. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Right? So you have to change. Your, the mindset has to change. The thought is this. A high income can provide amazing things for me, my family and friends, my community, and the causes I care about. Earning more money will be a powerful way to sustain me, my loved ones, and make a difference in the world. Okay? You have to, you have to just put a big X and things, oh, you know, this internal conflict and say, if I want to do right, and if I want to, if I want to support the causes I believe in, if I want to support the mission, I want to support the community, I want to support my family and friends and for myself, then I gotta retain a higher income level. Because without it, without it, we're not gonna be able to provide those things. Okay, that's the reality of it. So once we're comfortable with these nine things we talked about before and, and really getting comfortable about what our relationship with money is, now we can go to the next level, right? Now we can communicating it to prospects. So this is how this works. It's real simple. First, personal testimonial. You got to tell them why you love the products and tech. You never get away from this. You look, then you learn the company's purposely built on four pillars. We talked about that at the beginning of the presentation. You got to know what those four pillars are. You got to know them because you're going to talk about those four pillars. But it's anchored in your personal testimony because why you love the products and tech and what it's done for you or a loved one and how it's helping people and helped you. You have to know the four pillars and then you got to share the opportunity video. Okay? Because that explains that entire concept of the four pillars and what separates us from everything else in the world and every other company in the world. It's absolutely critical. That you they watch it or they watch it with you, okay? Because because it does a great job. But you don't have to memorize anything. Just make them watch it, and uh, then you can talk about it. You can follow up with it. The next thing is you're gonna you're gonna say I realized I can help people and reach my own financial goals goals by joining Vox Life. You have to share this. You have to say this in your own words. One of my goals is X. 
Terry and I talk a lot. And I know Terry's got a few things on his vision board, <clears throat> things that he wants to do for himself and his family and his loved ones. Right? We all have those things. Right? But when I share them with you, or when you share them with somebody, you're anchoring them to your belief system. Okay? So far, I've almost, I've reached or exceeded it, and the next year I hope to be at this level. Because what you're doing now is you're sharing. People want to hear your story. They want to hear your story of your commitment, your passion, <coughs> and your hopes and your dreams. Okay? This is what makes it real. It's critical you share your financial goal. This is also your why. This is your vision board, right? Your why is aligned with Vox's why of helping a billion people. Of course it is. If your goal is that, listen, you know what? I'd like to get a new car for the family. That's one of my goals. This, you know, it's going to help me reach it. This company is always organized on the four pillars. It's going to help me get a new car for my family. That's my goal. So far, I'm almost there. It's going to cost me about $1,000 a month. I'm at about $500 a month. I'm averaging the last three or four months. By the end of this year, I'm going to have an extra $1,000 a month. I'm going to reach my goal. I'm going to go get that car. Whatever that why is, whatever your goal is, because when you share this, you're going to be transparent. You're going to be real. You're going to be genuine. Otherwise, they won't believe you. It's so hard for people to believe in altruistic missions. It's so hard to say, well, you're just doing it for the fun of it. You just want to help a billion people. They're going to have a very skeptical look on your why until it's similar to their why. Because everybody has and why everybody has something that they want that they don't have but they want to do something for their family or their loved ones that they can't do right now so there's a little bit extra that they need so when you're genuine about your financial why they will believe you and believe you won't quit on your dreams and your why okay people have to know what your dreams are so they can believe in them helping a billion people is my dream you guys believe in that and you're executing it too that's fantastic you know i'm, I'm on that right because i committed to it and i built this business around to get to that why and getting to that why, I built a business, you can get to your why. It's so important that you know this. But if you want to talk about this, this is how you have to talk to them. Because if you don't talk about it, they're going to be wondering, why are you doing this? This doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a great product, but why are you investing so much time and energy? I don't get it. I don't get it. you got to share your personal financial goal. That this is what I'm trying to do, right? And I believe I'll reach my goal and the company will reach their goals. As the video says, because we have all of these amazing advantages, $40 billion market opportunity, unique and exclusive products, affordable for everyone, safe, non-invasive, all those amazing things that you know by heart. They know these, but you should know these by heart, right? The business mission and opportunity is perfectly aligned with achievement of my personal goals. Then ask if they have some lies they'd like to realize by aligning with you and the company. Okay? Guys, if people have joined your organization and you don't know what they're striving for or what they're trying to solve, you're not going to be able to really help them get where they need to get. Right? If Terry needs directions to get to Scarborough, and he's never been there, and I don't know he needs to get to Scarborough, I'm going to keep giving him directions to Oakville or Brantford or Hamilton. I need to know where he wants to go. Right? Then I need to know how he wants to get there. Listen, man, you want to take the bus? You want to take the train? You want to take Uber? You want to drive? You're going to walk. Every one of those has his own strategies of getting there. And we have to ask our prospective people, hey, this is what do you want to But before people are going to share with you their why, you got to tell them your why. Understand? It's only fair. Right? You're, you're in a position of leadership. you got to lead from the front and say, listen, this is why I'm doing this. I need to build up for my kids' college education. I need to change apartments. I want to go on vacation. Whatever it is. Now, there's no wrong answer here. It just has to be the truth. But before you can get to that why, you've got to go through those nine steps of finding out what's your relationship with money so you can really be crystal clear about what it is that you want and what it is that you're doing. And when you get here, you'll be able to talk about the opportunity like no problem. Why? Because you're completely committed to it. You understand now the alignment of the business mission with your personal mission and how to talk about it, right? But if we're uncomfortable talking about money, then we have to really do an introspective look about what it is that we're worried about, okay? 
that's very critical. So money can't buy you everything. And I'm going to leave it with this. Money can't buy you everything. No money can't buy you anything. Okay? This is the world we live in. Right? If you have loved ones that count on you, if you have dependents that count on you, if you have some hopes and aspirations that you've been chasing and dreaming about, I can tell you, if you have money, they'll be easier to get to. <laughs> Guaranteed. Right? And that's what's aligned with the entire business model, right? So let me just let me just revisit that, go all the way to the back, what we want to talk about. So what's the takeaway from this? This is what I need you guys to do for homework, okay? You got to crystallize your belief system about how you treat money and how you deal with it. What's your money mantra? Do you have something that you, in your core belief that's positive about money, that I can make more money, that I deserve more money, that I can, that I have opportunities, that I'm attracting more money, or is your reaffirmation of it negative that I'll never have enough, I've never had enough, and I won't ever have enough. You gotta get rid of the negativity and replace it with something positive. And you can write your own. But every time you think about money, this is what you're gonna do. So whether you're shopping, saving, earning more money, this is something you have to you have to really ingrain in yourself. And what do you think about money? Positive, negative. How much is a lot? How much is too much? How much is not enough? Until we know these things for ourselves, we're going to have a, a wishy-washy relationship with money. We're not going to be really sold on what, what money is all about and what it means to us and how we can attract more of it and build it and, and align with the company mission because the company is going to need money to reach a billion people, guys. Right? I have money. I can give away a few million pairs of socks, and that's it. Far cry from a billion. Right? So we got to make sure that we're, we know these things for ourselves. And what are, your what are our negative ideas about money? Is it the root of all evil or is the lack of money the, the, the root of the negativity? You're trying to save or you're trying to earn? How much time do you spend connecting with new people? Are you looking for people with healthy relationships with money? How do you act when you see the price of something? These are all things that are going to give you clarity. And there's no right or wrong answer here. It's going to give you clarity about your own position with where you're at. Okay? And that's the key here, guys. Because when you do that, then we'll be here. When you get that figured out, then you'll know where you are on this scale. Am I in survival mode? Have I moved up to status? Am I freedom? And have I gotten a purpose? Well, all of this is completely aligned with what Vox Life Corporate is doing because Vox Life Corporate has its own requirements of growth and investment and building and getting to more people, but it's perfectly aligned, right? So that's the key is understanding our own relationship with money and then sharing our why with people. This here is communicating the process. You gotta share your financial goal and your why beyond the corporate why, okay? The corporate why of helping a billion is a big corporate goal, but they won't tell you their why until they know your why, okay? So that's where this is it. And so the next training that we do, Stop sharing this for a second. We're back. Are we back? What happened? We're back, Jay. I just found All right, cool. Train the host, so you're on. <laughs> Super. Um, so there's more to this, right? What I wanted to give everybody today was an insight in terms of how to structure their own relationship and their own thought processes around money and their relationship with money. And that communicating that to, the, to your team and to prospective people that you meet, they want to know. I'm telling you, people you talk to want to know what's in it for you and why are you doing this beyond helping a billion people. And so you got to be honest with yourself. You got to write it down and you got to share it. Because once you share it, you ask them there, why, why, why would you want to do this? They're going to tell you. Because you cause, but you got to give first. You got to share, open up, and say, hey, I'm doing this for ABC. I've exceeded it, reached it, or almost there, whatever you're at. And by the end of this year, I hope to be here. And this is why I believe we're going to get to it because of all these amazing advantages the business technology has. What are you hoping to reach if you join us? And they're going to tell you. And if they don't have a why, that's okay. They're not ready because you can't give them a why. 
I, I can't give them a why. I can't give you a why. You got your own why. And it's more powerful than any why that I could give anybody, right? So that's the key. That's the key. All right. And that's the key. So I hope that was helpful. We're going to keep doing this. I'm going to come back once a month, work with Terry and Paul and everybody here, share some more thoughts. Um, but that's the key. So let's do that. I'm going to put this deck in the back office for tomorrow. You'll have it there to go through it, you know, review it as you like. You can listen to the recording. Uh, that'll be there as well. Um, thanks, guys. With that, I'm going to sign off. That was fantastic, um, Jay. Thanks, Terry. Listen, you guys are amazing. I, I so, so appreciate you guys giving me an awesome chance to give me a chance to come on and, and yap to you guys. <laughs> All right, guys. It's so important um, today to um, have your leadership. The field needs it. I need it. Um, the leaders in this company need it. And we appreciate you taking the time to come on here because in order to align with you, we need to hear you. And uh, I think it's so important. So uh, bless you, brother. Thanks for taking the time. Bless all of you. I love you all. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye for now. Guys. I'm just going to go in here, guys. I'm just going to unmute everybody. Thank you all for being You're all unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.